Good evening, everybody, um, city staff, fellow commissioners, guests, uh, Commissioner Betts. Um, I'd like to call to order the regularly scheduled March 8th meeting of the Community Service Commission. Uh, with that, I would like to have Vice Chair Heron lead us in the pledge. Vice Chair Heron. Everybody, please stand and face the flag. Okay. Ready to begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice Chair Heron. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to deviate a little bit from the agenda real quick to just introduce our newest member of the commission, Commissioner Timothy Bruton. Welcome. Do you want to say a couple of words? Yes, thank you for having me. I'm uh, really excited to be on the commission and uh, pleased to have a 35-year resident of Lake Forest. Uh, I retired from the Marine Corps and uh, stayed here after they closed Tustin. I was a helicopter pilot there. so uh, it's. I just settled in and my kids went to El Toro and uh, we remained local and I currently work at the Nixon Presidential Library in uh, Yorba Linda, California down there. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. We're really honored to have you here. Um, I uh, note for the uh, minutes I want it to reflect that the re let the record reflect that Commissioner Gould has um, an excused absence so she's uh, not feeling well. So we will be missing her tonight. Um, this is the time for the public comments to the public to address the commission on matters that are not on the agenda within the, the jurisdiction of the Community Services Commission. Comments shall be limited to three minutes. There'll be a clock up there that'll count down. The last 30 seconds, it'll turn red, and you know you have 30 seconds left to wrap it up. If you would like to participate, please fill out a speaker card and turn it into Commissioner Secretary Hall, and your name will be called. Speaker cards are available at the agenda review table at the back of the uh, auditorium. Madam Commission Secretary Hall, do we have any speakers? I have received one public comment, and that is from Jean Leo. Please step forward. Okay. Welcome. Hello. Is this on? Yes. Mm -hmm. My name is Eugene Leo. I'm a resident of Lake Forest. I live in uh, Freedom Village on El Toro Road. And uh, I've been there two years, and I'm here tonight to try to get a uh, proposal going for something that uh, we have in many cities in the vicinity. It's called bocce ball. Uh, I know we have pickleball courts, and I know Lake Forest has lots of parks, and probably be a good idea to if we can get some bocce courts in. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for letting me speak here today. Uh, bocce ball is a great game. It, uh, anyone can play. We've had people with disabilities. We've had military. Um, and of course, seniors and anyone else that can make the time. Uh, it's a simple game. Uh, you're rolling a ball. Yeah. You're going after a little white ball and the closest one gets the point. So it's very simple, but it's a lot of fun, very social. Uh, I've been associated with Laguna Niguel on the sports committee, and uh, we have many people who have belonged to the club. So I have one representative today, Pietro, but uh, we can do many more. So. I gave I gave Vicky um, <clears throat> Vicky Blethen a lot of material. It deals with contractors and prices, so hopefully we can get a, a start. And I'd be glad to assist anyone that gets involved. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm familiar to play bocce ball. We used to play it over on the uh, lawn at Outback, so very familiar with that. So okay. um, thank you so much and. Um, Okay. Is that something that we would agendize, or you would have you? you uh, Do you want to speak on that, Brett? Yes, thank you, Chair Matt. So this is something we can bring back at a future agenda to discuss. Okay, and thank you for um, be willing to help them out because uh, these guys are great at that. Okay, thank you, uh, Eugene. Thank okay, you, Eugene, um, for giving me the information as well. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jean. For giving me the information, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll make sure to pass it on to the rest of the commission, all right? Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is now the time for presentations, and our um, Deputy City Manager, Brett Channing, will uh, be doing our presentations. Thank you, Chair Matzel. The first presentation that we have tonight is to commend our former Commissioner, Susie Betts. So as you introduced um, our new Commissioner, Mr. Timothy Brut Bruton, uh, unfortunately that meant saying goodbye to one of our other favorite Commissioners, Susie Betts. Um, so we just, as a result, wanted to recognize her and thank her for her time that she served here on the commission. So we have a, a commendation for, for Susie and I just wanted to read it off real quickly what it says. The, the City of Lake Forest Community Services Commission thanks and commends Susie Betts for her dedicated service to the residents of Lake Forest during her tenure as Community Services Commissioner from July 2021 through November 2022. So it's been an honor and pleasure working with you, Susie. We're definitely gonna miss you and um, just wanted to have you, why don't you come on up and have a, take a picture with the commission for, with your certificate here. And we have your old name tag too, so. Uh, it's so a bonus. Come down. Yeah. Okay, and for our next um, presentation tonight, we have an update from the Public Works Department for their quarterly update through December 2022. We have our principal planner here, Nas, to give you our presentation. Julie? Welcome, Nas. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Commission. I'm Nas Mokaram, Principal Civil Engineer with Public Works Department. Uh, the Public Works Department update for the fourth quarter of calendar year 2022 is included in your meeting packet. I would like to bring to your attention a few capital improvement projects recently completed or currently under construction. From our street improvements program, I would like to mention sidewalk repairs project, uh, the annual survey and repair of existing damaged sidewalks at streets throughout the city is completed this month and staff is now surveying for annual park sidewalk rehabilitation program. The third phase of the neighborhood park improvements is currently underway. The final five parks in the neighborhood park improvements program are Sundowner, Vintage, Regency, Rancho Serrano, and Borrego Overlook Parks. Improvements at Sundowner Park are being completed this week and include replacing amenities such as benches, barbecues, and picnic tables. Vintage park improvements are anticipated to be completed in the second quarter of 2023. The improvements include new playground equipment, benches, barbecues, picnic tables, and a shade structure, as well as a DG walking pad with exercise equipment. Regency Park improvements were completed in the last quarter of 2022 and include new amenities and the addition of a new concrete walkway loop. Rancho Serrano Park improvement also include uh, new amenities and repair of concrete sidewalk at multiple locations. These improvements were also completed earlier this year. 
Borrego Overlook Park improvements include new playground equipment, benches, barbecues, picnic tables, and repair of a shade structure. Borrego Overlook Park improvements are anticipated to be completed in the second quarter of 2023. Second phase of uh, Arbor's Mini Park, the northeast side, began last May and was substantially completed in December, with sewer lateral connection scheduled for com construction and completion in next quarter. And lastly, I want to mention construction of El Toro Portola intersection traffic improvements started this week. This project is scheduled to be completed in summer 2023. This concludes my updates, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Naz, could you just repeat the parks again? I think I see him here. It was a Sundowner, Vintage, Borrego. Um, correct. Regency. Sundowner, Regency. Vintage, Regency Park, Rancho Serrano Park, and Borrego Overlook Park. So neighborhood parks, uh, imp park improvements program included um, improvements for 10 parks, and mm -hmm. five of them have already been completed. These are the last five uh, from that program that are being uh, uh, implemented right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Commissioners, anybody have any questions for Nas? Vice Chair Heron? Well, are we on? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're out of practice up here, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I was at the city council meeting where uh, some residents brought up Vintage Park, mm -hmm. and I did stop by there, and there were two people working. And so um, I'm hoping that that's going to come along a little faster. Is that right, or we're working on it? Yes, we are hoping to. <laughs> okay. So Vintage Park and uh, Borek Overlook Park, uh, you know, we had an unprecedented, unprecedented amount of rain this winter. Oh, yes. yes. And uh, we are looking at um, delays for these two parks uh, for two reasons, the amount of rain we had, mm -hmm. as well as they also included uh, playground equipment, uh, uh, renewing the playground equipment, and those equipment also or long items and they, there was a supply chain issues with those oh. so uh, we are working very closely with the contractors um, and uh, we are trying to uh, get them done as soon as possible but you know because of the rains and because of the long lead items there are delays to those two projects and uh, you know we talk about rain days but sometimes the next day when the site is muddy there is not working yeah, condition we as well then, yeah. so what we are hoping is that the weather condition uh, improves uh, and we can ramp up those projects in the next few weeks. Okay, great, because I know the neighbors there would love to see that one. Though. Oh, yeah, so definitely. I, I think all of us would too, because I know when I was there, <laughs> they, um, it looks like they were like messing around with, you know, trying to figure out where to put the playground equipment. I mean, you know, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but so I did, you know, take a look around and I thought, well, yeah, it needs some work. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, well, thank um, you very and much. And playground equipment has been installed in Borrego Overlook uh, oh, project. And we encourage our contractor for Vintage Park to uh, basically, you know, use the same professional team. Oh, so we are hoping that um, that one goes as smoothly as well. So. Oh, I hope so too. But thank you very much for that mm -hmm. update. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Any other questions? Commissioner Bruton? No. Commissioner Chair? Okay, thank you, Nas. Thank you. Look um, this is the time for the Commission to consider matters listed under the consent calendar. Uh, do any commissioners wish to pull any items from the consent calendar? I'd like to abstain from the minutes. Uh, please note in the record that uh, Commissioner Bruton is abstaining as this was, he was not present for the, th was it December? Yeah, the December 2022 yeah, meeting. Yeah. Thank you for. Uh, Noting that, Commissioner Bruton. Okay, so do I hear a motion to approve the consent calendar? Okay, so moved. Oh, I gotta do this, hold on. So moved. Uh, I'll second. That passes three to zero with uh, Commissioner Gould um, out and uh, Commissioner Bruton abstaining. 
Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to the discussion items. This is time for discussion items, and they will be presented again by Deputy City Manager Brett Channing. Mr. Channing. Thank you, Chair Matt. So uh, for this is going to be the recreation report for the months of December, January, and February, and I'm going to start it off with uh, Recreation Manager Vicki Blatton. Good evening. Again, good evening, everyone. Um, quite a lot of information in this packet. We have our three months to cover. I just want to briefly go over some of the items that were the highlights. Um, in the month of December, we had, oh, numerous items. We had our tree lighting ceremony. We had all of the holiday seasonal events that get us all ready for the fun at Christmas time. Um, the tree lighting will be going on again as an annual event this next year. We This year, Santa came in on a uh, fire truck. We don't know what Santa's coming in um, next year. It's going to be a surprise to everybody, so we, we know you'll all come and enjoy that. Um, we also had quite a few events that went on at the clubhouse um, with our Holly Jolly Luncheon, our um, Ice Castle Masquerade Dance, um, we had our emeritus classes kicked off um, in January, and they're all back up and going after the pandemic. So it's a very busy place over at the clubhouse. Uh, new people coming in all the time. Um, we average right now, I'd say, between uh, 50 to 100 people there daily between all the classes and programs that we offer. So it's so nice to hear everybody back and bustling. I know it sounds like that we feel like the pandemic's kind of far back, but for those of us who were here when the facilities were super quiet, we still enjoy hearing all the noise. It's so nice to have them all back. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is that I gave you a new chart for our revenue. I noticed when I was working on a budgetary item that I had um, an error in the skate park filming and classes. Look at the numbers are the same. So you'll see there's a new one of these for you um, with the new chart and uh, the chart that's in your uh, report says 60% of our revenue for the fiscal year. Well, the little change only took us down to 59%. So we didn't go down that much, but we are definitely on uh, in line to be going to our 100% of our revenue for this fiscal year. I didn't go over every individual thing in this packet because it's quite large, but I'd be very happy to answer any questions for you about any of the programs from the skate park or the clubhouse facility. I just had I just had one question. What this we drove past the skate park at Edney's the other night. Yes. Um, I should probably know this, but what time is it actually closed this time of the year officially? This time of the year we're closing at well it depends. During the weeknight they close at either eight about I think it's eight thirty. On the weekends we're open till nine. Yeah, I wasn't sure because yeah. the, the but when it's closed, the lights are out because the, the lights, lights are, are off. On. Correct. I usually don't go Correct. down there that time. Um, of night, so. Unfortunately, you're going to see uh, participation numbers in December and uh, and in January are going to be lower. Obviously, we've had so much rain, yeah. and yeah. and when there's any type of moisture at the park, even if there's a even fog moisture, they have to close because it's obviously it's dangerous to be skating when it's wet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering about yeah. the lights. I figured yeah. it closed later. Yes. And that's why there's so many lights Yes, there. during the summer we have our, we lengthen the hours. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, commissioners, any questions for Ms. Bluffin? Commissioner yes. Bruton? Thank you. Just for clarification, yes. uh, this is based on the fiscal year budget? Yes. June? And our, yeah, fiscal is June? July. July. Yeah. July okay. 1st through June 31st. Yeah. Okay. So some of the numbers that are um, under percentage are are those seasonal, like youth programs? Do you, yes, those, those are, come up during yes, this? Good, great question. Yes, those are seasonal. Um, you will also see that a lot of the programs that are the youth programs, the ones that have to are, are camp programs. You'll see when in July, when you see this chart, we get a lot of our registration for those programs in June. So Correct. all those okay. numbers kind of hang out to the very end, and those then you'll see them spike up to be more of more towards the hundred percent that they should be at. Okay, so on average, just like the gazebo rent is at seventy five percent, that's very average. That's because yes. this is seventy five percent yes. of the budget. Yes, in season. What you're gonna also see is that this number in the past may have been bigger, but because we've had so much rain right. that what even if you rent the gazebo, we give you a refund if it's oh. if it gets rained out. So uh, this is pretty 
par for the course of where we should be at this time of year. Um, we do see a large spike in regards to our youth programs, um, a lot of our skate park programs, more towards the summertime than you would towards this time. But that's, yeah, that's a great question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh -huh, you're welcome. Okay, Vicki. Yes. Vice Chair Hearn. Thank you. Um, in regards to the teen programs, that budget is 44000 Is that what you're going to expect with the teen camps? Yes. Yes. Because I know our... Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, just double checking. Thank you. Yes. Commissioner Chair, any questions for Ms. Blethyn? Um, uh, first of all, that uh, tree lighting thing, everything that came before that, it was really a lot of fun, brought the family, had a good time. Um, uh, what was I going to say about that? Yeah, so that was a really great event. Um, wanted to just uh, say, because Loretta and I are long time, going back to Ho 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 with the, the Lake yeah. Commissioner, our wonderful friend Jim Rosenberg, um, we were able to do the Santa calls yeah. for just a little while. Yeah. So just a little request, right? Uh, if we could do it, not on a commission, on if it works out for you. We got a few calls yeah. in, but then yeah. we had to leave. And I had a pretty good Santa. He was pretty good for the first time. So. Oh, good. Um, so yeah, if you could just request that, Loretta and I would. We will add that to our list. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But anyway, the the tree lighting thing was really great. I mean, I don't know where you guys find the time. Do you know how many uh, uh, toys they collected? I mean, is there a number for the Sparks oh, of Love? Uh, a lot. I know it was a lot. I don't. I don't remember right offhand. Um, it was at least two of those big barrels full. And that's partnered with OCFA? Yeah, partnered with OCFA for and that. And are they delivered to engine to uh, Firehouse 19 and they take care of? Um, Ashley delivered them to the main firehouse that was kind of the head of it for this year, which is the one in Aliso. Oh, is that, so, is that is the family? Yeah, loaded up the, my, I had to put the top down my Camaro, loaded it all up and <laughs> took them on over, yeah. Vicki Bleth and you do it all. <laughs> As does I, Miss Lisa. Lots of good helpers. As does Laura yeah, Lisa. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that was it's just the Santa calls. Okay. Uh, good oh, evening, Chair Matzel and fellow it over commissioners. To I'm gonna handle the second half of and, the And just record. on a note, Miss <laughs> Lesek is here, injured, but she's still here. <laughs> so we thank you for that, because you were at the oh, no. parade committee meeting, you had a night off and you're back, so thank you. No problem, I love to be here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cover those same months. Vicki had quite a few activities. Um, most of my events were handled right in the beginning of December. So we had, like, as we mentioned, letters to Santa and the Santa calls. We had over 98 letters um, that were written to Santa, Santa being myself. So that was quite enjoyable to see all those letters. Um, and then actually return letters back to them. And, and it's nice because sometimes I will get like a, a parent phone call that's you know so appreciative to have those letters for their kids it's a one-time lifetime experience that they get um, also had breakfast with Santa and it's always hosted at the clubhouse so generously um, we had over a hundred individuals attend each session so we had two different sessions we had our same Santa um, coming in we actually added a new component this year we had live music so that was nice we had some live singing of Christmas carols um, we had a great day I wanted to review some of our numbers that we have. As you can see in our activity um, report here, our contract classes um, still going strong. We have both inside and outside. The outside instructors really liked to remain outside, so it's kind of nice because we can offer an option. Um, and then the sports permits, I mean, they're just so, so successful. Um, you could see in N2, um, even though January the permits were down due to weather and things like that, um, but the numbers are still great. And then as you can see in the community center rentals, um, our permits are, are soaring. Um, and you'll see in the next couple months, they're really booked, um, whether it be for a wedding reception or a birthday party or um, any kind of memorial service. We're even getting a lot of bookings for seminars and conferences and things like that from larger companies. So it's nice to see that as well. Um, the word's really spreading. We get a lot of return um, visitors and a lot of return guests and a lot of return reservations based off of the the location and our staff are wonderful. I get plenty of compliments on the staff that I have, so I'm really proud of that. But I did want to highlight some of the upcoming calendar events. Um, put on your calendar, please, for April 1st. Bunny Blast is right around the corner. So that will be held at El Toro Park. So Tim, we hope to see you there for our first event. 
Um, for April 22nd, we will have the Pet Expo and the Spring Boutique together. So we're trying something new and bringing the Spring Boutique over to the sports park to give them some love and some attention. Um, the Pet Expo always brings in a nice crowd, so that would be great. Um, and then one of Vicki's events is the Spring into the 70s dance. Did you talk about that? No, I didn't. I was zipping through my stuff. So that's at the clubhouse, and that'll be for the seniors. Yes. So that'll be something cool for them. Um, that's all I have for my rec report, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lisak. Um, I just uh, wanted to, uh, oh, just some questions. Uh, the, uh, as you know, I'm a part, uh, a partaking of the uh, Civic Center uh, facility, and um, I know you said you, there's one room or two rooms. If you have, if to have the dance floor, you have to do both rooms. Is yes. that correct? Yes. And what's the maximum capacity is how much in both? I know you told me that from my for, booking. So. For, yeah, for two rooms, um, comfortably banquet style and a dance floor, I would say about 180. Okay. Yeah, depending on the size of the dance floor. Okay. Yeah, my fiance is freaking out already because I'm already up to 120, but uh, so anyway. Plenty of space, plenty of plenty space, of space. For you. Okay, well, thank you for helping with my personal book. Sure, no that. problem. Um, and also, I love this, uh, the pause pet therapy. How often do they come, and is that, is that um, they come here and just interact with, with, oh, the, with the seniors? <laughs> The pause? Um, the pa yes. So we're trying to bring in different types of um, groups to talk to the, with the seniors. And I have a very good friend who is involved in pet therapy. And so, and Tim, you'll get to know this. In my crazy head, I'm like, how can we have them come visit here, bring them here? So they came this for the first time uh, this last, was it a couple months ago? We're talking about December. having the mini therapy horses come as well. Um, I've also seen... They're um, called they're Danish bunnies. They're like huge Danish bunnies that are therapy. So I'm trying to figure out how to sneak those in as well. So the, the seniors love them, and the dogs love the seniors. So it was great. Uh, is it uh, mainly dogs and that in the little horse? It's, it, that um, this this time the dogs came, but um, we are looking at having other type of therapy animals come as well. Now, these animals are they. Do they come from shelters? Do they live at this organization when they're not here? Their, uh, their owners are specially trained to be able to have the animals, the dogs, go through a huge amount of training to be able to be therapy dogs. Um, you, you definitely know they're a therapy dog by their behavior. So they actually live with... Yes, the they live with their it's, their owners. It, it's yeah. like the seeing eye dogs, but, but the seeing eye dog... Uh, yes. Trainers eventually give their dogs up to people that yes, need them. Yes, these dogs live with their owners. Oh, that's yeah. good. Mm -hmm, I, was, mm -hmm. I was hoping. Yeah. yeah, and then the owners bring them as part of the therapy. Uh, they, they go through a lot. The owners go through quite a bit of training as well as the animals do. Are they initially rescued from a shelter or are they? You know, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask the owners themselves, okay. um, but uh, I'm not familiar. The, my friend who does this, her dogs are not. Um, shelter dogs. They are uh, bred specifically to do that type of activity. Because, you know, any of us that have pets, you know that they're very soothing and they, you know, yeah. just petting them makes yeah. it really so. And there's a great commercial on TV where um, this little girl's in the hospital, you've probably seen it. Yeah. And um, she looks like I'm, and a little dog comes in and just puts his head on the yeah. bed. It's like, yeah. yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, it, um, was, it was very successful. So we were very great. happy that they Such could come. Horrible. Yeah. I know, yeah. so sweet. Okay, so that was a question. Um, thank you, Ms. Lisak, for your report. I didn't say that. Uh, commissioners, any question for Ms. Lisak? No, I'm good. No, okay. No? Commissioner Bruton? Okay. Thank you both. I say this every meeting, but I'm going to repeat it until you kick me <laughs> off the commission. You guys do an amazing job. I thank don't know you. where you find the time. And you get extra bonus points. I know. She gets here. extra points tonight. <laughs> extra bonus I'll points for being here. Okay. So, all right. So, I believe uh, that is... Um, uh, back to Deputy Senior Manager Channing, I believe uh, we have uh, your discussion items. Thank you, Chair Matzel. Yes, this next agenda item is regarding the Senior Advisory Board appointment. So uh, over 10 years ago, the City Council created a advisory board for the Senior Center that interacts primarily with the staff and gives feedback as to the activities of what's going on in the Senior Center. Um, in the past, they've uh, had either a two- or four-year term, 
and have been appointed by the Community Services Commission. So during COVID-19, um, when the community or when the senior center closed down, we had to pause the program. And when it reopened, uh, we we briefly have had the program restart. However, now that um, the commission is in full effect and the senior center is now re running full effect, we wanted to get back on on the original terms of office for the community for the senior advisory board at um, the two and four year terms. So this time we're going to do it slightly different than what's been done in the past. We're going to be treating the senior advisory board very similar to how you were treated by the city council in terms of appointments. So each one of you have the, have the ability to appoint one individual to the senior advisory board. We tonight have given you the applications that we have received and um, it is incumbent on you to reach out to those individuals over the next month between now and the next meeting and have conversations with them and essentially rank or um, your top individuals for the senior advisory board. So you each will have the ability to appoint one with a second from one of your colleagues. And based on who appoints that individual will we'll be determining their term. So for instance, Commissioner Shear and Commissioner Gould have two years left on their term on the commission. Whoever they appoint will have two years on the senior advisory board. Commissioner Bruton, Heron, and Matzel, you all have four years left. So whoever you appoint will be appointed for four years on the senior advisory board. So this is just kind of informational for you to know tonight to take the home with you for the next month, look through that packet, reach out to those individuals, and be prepared to come at our next meeting uh, with your recommendations to the senior advisory board. And that concludes my report if you have any questions. Uh, yes, Mr. Channing. So uh, we look we look through the list and these all these applications. We all have the same applications. We all have the same applications. Correct. And should we? I know we got to stay away from the Brown Act. So how do we know? Like Loretta, are you going to call Mary? Are you going to call John? Um, so it, it's okay if you talk we, with we each individually. You just individual. can't talk to each other about about, about the others. So we, she can call Janice and I can call Janice. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. That was question. Definitely. Any other questions about the applications? Oh. Um, Vice Chair? Yes, okay. Um, by the way, thank you for doing this. I know this is kind of a wonky way, and um, the the people that I, I know on the Senior Advisory Board have really been very determined to get this done, because they are ready to go. And, um, and they've really been talking oh, my ear off, kind of. No offense to them, though. Oh, no offense. Um, but um, in the future, I would prefer that we do not do it this way. I'd prefer that we um, be able to vote um, as a whole. It's something to think about. I just, I just prefer it that way. I think it's easier and, and it's a nice way that, I mean, we're probably gonna all call them and all maybe meet with them or not, but I just, I prefer it the other way. So there you are, thank you. So she wants. Um, so, for instance, in the past, we were able to vote as a whole, like okay, so many votes for that person as opposed to us appointing a person. We all have a voice, I and mean, we kind of do now. It used to and be, a, still, and used you still will with yeah. this. Um, you all have the ability to provide a second to whoever you want um, nominated. So there's still a, a consensus among the group in the sense it's just not full. The reason we're doing this is because it's all five. So it's a little different right. than normal. I know, normal, I know. That's so. why it's all five. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'd say next time. We'll do it. Maybe Great. Thank all you. right. Thank you. But I understand why we're doing it this way this time. So, but thank you. And I know these applicants are excited. Mm -hmm. They can't wait to get going. I mean, unbelievable. They're so ready. <laughs> thank you. So, Mr. Channing, um, we discuss. We will be discussing calling. You can each call them, v Commissioner Chair, Vice Chair Heron, uh, Commissioner Gould, and Commissioner Bruton can all call the same people, and then the night that we choose them, uh, they none of us know who we're going to nominate. Like, like for instance, I was nominated by uh, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Tenemer. And I know that the other, the, none of the other council members knew who he was going to pick, uh, or, or council member voice. Is it similar to that? So we won't know till that night. That's correct. Okay. 
Um, as you see, there's, there's six individuals um, that applied, and there's five positions. So essentially, all but one is going to be appointed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so just that's why I'd recommend essentially picking your top five um, okay. for the spots. Okay. Right. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Channing on this? Okay. Uh, Mr. Channing, uh, I guess the one more item on the uh, discussion item. Yes, uh, yes. Now we're on to the next item, which is the selection of the chair and vice chair um, for tonight. So uh, with this item, um, as you guys are aware, every year um, the chair rotates for this commission. And uh, Margie, has Chair Massel, has done an amazing job over the last year. But it's now time to move on to a new chair for 2023. And the way that this works is um, there's a nomination from the group as to who you would like to serve as chair for the coming year. Uh, we would need a second and a vote for that. After we've done that vote, we would then be voting on the vice chair. And the role of the vice chair is essentially to fill in for the chair when the chair is absent. Um, so at this point, I would be looking to the commission for a nomination for chair for 2023. Um, I just have a question in general. Uh, does a commissioner have to be present to be nominated? Does not. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, well, I would like to, if I may, Mr. Channing, I'd like to uh, nominate my fellow vice chair, Loretta Heron, as chair for uh, this coming year. Okay, thank you. I have a second? Second. Thank you. Second. Let's see. So we can vote on that. We, uh, Madam Secretary, are we uh, voting? It says selection of chair and vice chair. You'll put that up again? Yes. Okay. Yes, this is, it'll be up there this twice. This is just for the chair. This is just chair. Okay. And Loretta, you can vote for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> and let's see. That unanimously passes 4 0 with uh, Commissioner Gould being absent. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave. Soon to be chair, Heron. Okay. Congratulations. At this point, we'd be looking for a nomination for vice chair. Do I have any nominations for vice chair? Uh, I'd like to nominate Commissioner Gould for vice chair. I will second that. That passes unanimously 4 0 with uh, Commissioner Gould. Our next vice chair, who is absent, excuse absence tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to uh, deputy senior manager comments. Mr. Channing, do you have any uh, comments? Yes, thank you, Chair Matzel. Just uh, a few. Uh, the first one is to let all of you know that on March 22nd there will be a Meet the Mayor State of the City event put on by the Chamber of Commerce. You're all invited. Um, I have anyone who has not received an invitation, I have them for you and I can get them to you via email or um, at a later time. So uh, everyone, hope to see you there, not required, but it's a great event, hope you can make it. And just a, a welcome to uh, Commissioner Bruton, looking forward to having you on the commission. It was a pleasure meeting with you earlier today. Thank you, uh, Deputy Senior Manager Hanny. Oh, were those sent via email from the Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if I got one, but I'll check. Okay. Oh, Judy. Okay. Uh, okay, it's now time for um, commissioner comments. Our new commissioner, Bruton. Yes, uh, I'd uh, like to point out, I attended the uh, joint commission meeting um, and found it very fruitful and interesting and interactive. Mm -hmm. We had a, a good time and came up with some very good ideas in my opinion. Um, also this morning I uh, had an orientation brief we'll call it for the uh, with uh, um, was it was with uh, Mr. Channing and uh, Linda and Biggie and I really appreciate that kind of getting my head around everything a lot of a lot of moving parts a lot of little pieces and a lot of big pieces so thank you for your time and uh, that's all I have thank you uh, Commissioner Scher thank you I also attended the uh, Joint Commission meeting it was uh, very informative and I'm glad that we had it scheduled it gives us a chance to give feedback on various topics and uh, I, I, I think that's bodes well for the future as far as interacting 
uh, with other commission members and talking about very critical issues. Uh, as I've said in the past, I'm always very impressed with the Senior Center activities. I, I thank, uh, thank you for the programming. I, there's so many activities here, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> but uh, as you know, we have a very active senior population in the city of Lake Forest and very fortunate to have these programs available all the way from bingo. I, I try to attend the uh, uh, Thursday luncheon, which is well done. And the staff, the part-time staff, I don't know how they complete all the various tasks with the number of people, but uh, job well done. Pass that along to the staff. And uh, I'm very excited about the future. We have a lot of positive things that we're going to be looking at as a city. Uh, also, uh, we get accolades because our city is so well managed. We're one of the very few cities that have managed our finances in such a way that we're debt free. And that is something that's very impressive compared to other cities in, in our area. And it just goes to show you with the right management team, the right infrastructure. Uh, we are well uh, uh, well positioned for the future uh, in terms of our growth. Also, I, I want to compliment the city on the program of buying, uh, purchasing gift cards. Uh, I understand that's going very well. Bogan. Bo Bogo. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember the term. And it, 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 yeah, you buy one and you get a, a free uh, attached card. And I understand it's been uh, funded continually uh, until the funds run out, <laughs> uh, is my understanding. So I'm, you can go online to, to, to get those cards. So I'm excited about that as well. So thank you. And thank you, Chair Commissioner Metzl? Chair. Oh, oh, Chair Metzl, before we move forward, um, Commissioner Gould has reached out to me and in her absence asked if I read a comment on her behalf. Oh, please. Okay. Please, thank you. Um, she would like you to know that she's sorry to have missed this meeting and she'd like to welcome Tim to the commission and she looks forward to working with him. Um, she'd like to first with, with a ginormous thank you to city staff, specifically Bill and Ken, for working with Lake Forest Little League and setting up the league to have a very successful opening day this past Saturday at the Lake Forest Sports Park. She would like to make a request to have the Mountain View Park bathrooms evaluated because there seems to be some graffiti in there and there are no doors. Um, this may be a divide sign, but it should be half doors. Um, thank you to city staff for all you do and she looks forward to being at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. And we have good news for her, right, Vice Chair? Yeah. Vice Chair Heron, your comments? Oh, uh -oh. okay, I'm gonna, I know. I have a lot, but I'm going to rush through them. Betty okay. Betty said fast and she said. So I attended our uh, Bunko events, December and February, and uh, my little buddy here came Finally. with me and her hubby, or fiance. Well, I know we always have a good time at Bunko, so thank you for continuing to have those events. Um, I went to the special needs dance back in December, I just can't tell you enough good things about those dances and our staff there. Oh, yeah, just awesome. Attended the mayor's leadership breakfast. Um, I, as, um, oh, anyway, the clubhouse lunches I've tried to go to. Oh, I also went to the holiday lights at Heritage Hill. That was, you know, always good, always good. Um, and the senior dance that they had ice castles in January. Oh my God, we had a lot of Marines there. I hope they come for that spring into the 70s one. Um, I also did the CPRS District 10 training. They had that in Tustin and I attended every topic that I could fit in for that day. And one of the things that I was surprised, they had some people talking about marketing to seniors and they don't want to, okay. What they said is that they, the term seniors might have more of a negative connotation, so now they want us to use the term older adults. So I'm just telling you that's what I came away with, or one of the many things I came away with at this uh, workshop. Okay, uh, Snowfest, boy was that fun as always. And then of course, 
Margie and I have been attending our parade meetings. I've been trying to go to some of the chamber events and then the uh, webinars, and I went to some ribbon cuttings and the social media workshop. Oh, also, our one of our seniors is turning 103. Her name is Helen, and um, we're trying to collect 103 birthday cards. So if you can, or if you have not already done so. We're very okay. close to getting the 103, Are but we, if we go over 103, that's, that's fine okay. too. That's good. So yeah. Anyway, that so I, since Monday night, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is good. Did you have 54 on Monday? Oh, did yeah. you? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Oh, so anyway, so keep, keep that going, I guess. Um, of course, I also attended the strategy workshop with all the commissioners. I am enjoying that BOGO program so much, but today I went to Taste Catering, and the gal, because I've become friends with them, is, as I do, and she came up to me, she goes, we're not doing it anymore. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? And she goes, I, I don't know, but we're not doing it. We're not, I don't know. So I will reach out to our people and taste catering and say, please do it. Because that's one of my favorite places. And then, um, of course, the, I still love our VIP volunteer and parks programs, and I did go to Vintage Park, and I also went to Veterans Park. With all the rains that we had, that water level is seeping a little bit into the grass area, you know, and so I'm just worried we have more rains coming. So I don't know what we're going to, just want to let you know, be on the lookout there. Um, oh, and then I saw online we're hosting princess parties for so many Saturdays in a row. I think I want to go check that out because that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> they didn't have that when I was little. Um, and then I will also be attending the CPRS conference in San Diego, and I've already signed up to do the park tour as well. And that's coming up in April. And then uh, the Marines want us to do a cookie drop show this to everybody Ta -da -ta -da. and I know I will be participating we have lots of cookies that we already have oh do we have as, a lot of yes so okay, it's great good. so but bring in more bring in more bring I in more bring in more yeah. we've got 300 yeah. huh yes we'll bring, bring them to the clubhouse and we will the take them to Diane who will then right. deliver them and they need them by March 16th at noon yes. no later yes. so I'm excited to that I'm gonna yeah. get that mixer out get the oven started try out some new recipes but anyway so that is it for me so aren't you proud yeah. I, I did keep it kind of fast oh no thank you i just mean proud mike getting it done we're always proud <laughs> thank you we're always proud of you yeah. vice chair heron <laughs> are you still the vice chair no you're are you the chair yet no no you, well yeah, you finish off the meeting oh, okay yeah okay um anyway we're not surprised because you're such a great commission you have been for a while but you're still amazing to us oh, and all the you stuff so you do. Okay, uh, my comments, these are my final comments. I want to start off by saying, uh, Commissioner Scher uh, told me four years ago that at a, in December that there was an opening on what was then the Park and Rec Commission. And I said, what do I know about parks and what do I know about recreation? <laughs> he said, you know enough, you're involved with the city. So I hesitated, but he kind of encouraged me and that was early December. The deadline was December 31st, and literally, you guys know, I turned it in at a quarter to five probably on that day. <laughs> and um, so, um, you know, I, I, I really appreciate your confidence in me. Uh, I guess just experience being a volunteer for the city, I guess I knew enough. Um, I was a little shy at the beginning, but I wanna thank the support of uh, yourself, Vice Chair Hare, uh, Commissioner Share, for getting me I, at first I said, you got me into this, but now I thank you for getting me into this. You know, Victor, what did you get me into? So that, that was my, the history of how I got here. And um, just uh, some thanks. Uh, Loretta, I'm Vice Chair Hare, finally got myself and my fiance Rick to Bunko. She's been trying, what, for 10 years? Is it 10 years? Maybe five? And it was fun. I don't know. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And you know, it's a lot. It's about fellowship and just kind of. It's a, it's a nice way. Oh, I'm just talking. Okay. It's a wonderful way to meet new people, get to know the pe get to know the people that you do know a little bit better, and um, it's just fun. And I, I actually, I mean, I look forward to because 
you know, I've gotten to the point where a lot of people, the same people show up, and, and it's like you are developing a very nice friendship and say, how are the kids? How's your job going? I mean, it's just, I, I think I'm comfortable in saying I would like to know, I would think that we're all friends, but because of Bunko. So thank you for that. And the nice part of it is that yeah, I didn't realize, I knew nothing about Bunko, so when I got there, you do change tables. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a little competition because uh, I guess I won more games than Rick did, but it didn't bother him too much. He goes, how many games did you win? But it was really good and, you know, meeting a lot of people. And even when I showed up at the door, Loretta, even though, though I said it was coming, I think you still weren't sure. And I came in and she just gave me the biggest hug. Yay, you're here. So I finally did Bunko. We're going to do it again. Um, I attended, I know this is be before, um, in December, I attended tree lighting. As I mentioned, great job on that. Um, I did Snowfest. Mm -hmm. And uh, lines are bigger than ever. And we did the Santa Claus calls. Loretta and I did. We go way back doing that. Uh, the BOGO program, um, I guess uh, Sean McGovern, I believe, uh, heads that program. Is that right? Secretary Hall. Um, he gives reports to us every so often, and the numbers are really, really good. Um, so it's a great program, and um, just a really good program. Uh, and uh, Commissioner Gould, soon to be Vice Chair Gould, uh, she has brought um, her expertise in the Lake Forest Little League, which is a big part of Parks and Recreation Community Center. So she's been a great addition. We, we hear a lot that we didn't hear before about the Little League, so she's been a great addition, and I look forward to her being vice chair and possibly uh, chair at some point. Uh, let me see what else. Again, I want to thank uh, Ms. Lissack and Ms. Blethin for all that you do, and, um, and also I always forget sometimes to uh, thank your staff. I think it's great that uh, Courtney is now, you know, heading the meetings with you kind of in the background, still guiding her. And it was great to meet those two new uh, gals. I don't really know if I remember their names. Who, who are the new gals that on the parade committee? Aubrey and Caitlin. Aubrey and Caitlin. So um, it's, you know, it's a well-oiled machine. And um, uh, I really, really like, she had a little bit of challenge from one of our newer members. And uh, she handled it really well. So um, one of our new volunteers, I should say. So. Uh, the thing about uh, the City of Lake Forest, it's a big volunteer community, mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about that, at, you know, possibly having that at the end of the parade, saying, you know, this is brought to you by the City of Lake Forest Volunteer Committee, you know, because a lot of people think, oh, the city probably puts together, spends a lot of money, but uh, not really. It's all volunteers. So looking forward to the 4th of July parade, and Ms. Uh, Lisa sign me up for rolling off those porta-potties, please. <laughs> Because I know it's a job in great demand. I know that. Yeah, I get along great with the driver, so it really works well. So um, I just want to say thank you again to Victor for uh, for having confidence in me to, to bring me to this. Uh, I can't believe it's been four years. I look forward to another four years. I look forward to uh, our new chair and our new vice chair. And uh, Commissioner Bruton, welcome. And I know you're going to be a great addition. And um, just really glad to have you here. And with that, I will, let, oh, the next uh, scheduled meeting will be uh, Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. With that, that concludes the meeting. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, again, the unsung hero, our Madam Secretary, Vanessa Hall. We don't thank you enough. So thank you for those first few meetings. When I say, could you please print me the agenda? My printer isn't working and always here for me. So thank you. I got a lot better, hopefully, bringing my own agenda. So thank you. Uh, in case we forget to thank you, we all thank you. So thank you, uh, thank you, Secretary Hall. Okay, the